has tried to say that you as a citizen have to purchase something. I think it's unconstitutional. I think it should be fought. I use that as an example, and I would fight against any other unwarranted intrusions into state rights. Thank you. My name is Jackie Warner, Jackie Smith Warner, so that you'll know that Smith, there's an awful lot of Smiths around, so if they would all vote for me, that should be quite successful, because I know I've got more than you do. Uh, <laughs> I started out in a mill village when I was... Uh, first was born in Anderson, South Carolina. My dad was military. We moved to North Carolina when I was eight years old, and I've been here ever since. Uh, my parents retired after my dad took, had four tours of duty in Vietnam and moved back to South Carolina. My sister and I chose to stay here because this seemed like home. I graduated from Massey Hill High School, went to Pembroke State University, uh, came back to give back. I thought that I needed to come back to the community from where I came from, and I became a teacher at Bird High School. I taught at Bird High School, coached, worked with children, got married, been married to the same man for 31 years. We have two children, both products of Cumberland County Schools, and both giving back in that they've moved back home once they both graduated from NC State. I have been all the things that moms usually do. I was a PTA president, Baldwin Elementary School. I've been a Cub Scout den leader. I've been a Girl Scout den leader. I've been a football, baseball, anything you can imagine. So I've been involved in the community in the ways that moms do. My concern, and it's true in my education background also, is I'm concerned about the children. I'm concerned about what's going to happen to the young men and women out there today. That's the reason I decided to run for office. I see the changes in what has happened in education since I've been involved, not just in what's being taught, but also in what we can do. I've also been concerned about the taxes. I think there's, we've got to stop taxation. There's too much, too much spending and too much uncontrolled spending. What I see is that we're, we put a lot of dollars in a lot of places and we don't hold people accountable. And that's one thing that I have had to do in my career is be accountable. And I believe that's what we have to do as citizens is make those that go to Raleigh or Washington to be accountable. So I truly believe that I can identify with the people that are in this room. Church is important to me and my family. I said when someone asked me if I was coming tonight, I said, yes, of course, because if there's one safe place for me, I know it's in a church. So I, too, like all the rest have said, I believe that we've got to control what's happening from the federal government. I do not like unmanded things that we have to do. And most importantly, I think that you've got to have a voice in Raleigh that identifies with the people in Cumberland County and no more cronyism. Hi, I'm Johnny Dawkins. I'm running for the North Carolina House District 44. I'm um, the Republican nominee. Uh, my dad liked to start out by saying, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. Well, <laughs> I think he stole that line from Ronald Reagan, by the way. Um, I bring you greetings from the Mother Church. Uh, Pastor, I, you probably know this, but the Mother Church is Snyder, Memorial Baptist Church, and the Grandmother Church is First Baptist Church downtown. And uh, obviously, it's a great honor for me uh, to be here and bring you greetings from Snyder. I'm a states' rights guy, so I, I can tell you that in the first 100 days, we're going to pass the Health Care Freedom Protection Act in the North Carolina House, which is going to exempt North Carolina from the job-killing, liberty-restricting uh, Obamacare law. It's no longer a uh, bill. It is law. So uh, we've, we've got to stop it. <clears throat> a little bit about me, 17 years uh, running my own business, a uh, small businessman. Um, Wesley and Eric mentioned 82nd Airborne Division. I did not serve there. However, General Caldwell made me the fifth honorary member of the 82nd Airborne Division, of which I'm very proud. Uh, I am a past member of the Fayetteville City Council. I am also a past honorary commander of the 43rd Airlift Wing at Pope Air Force Base. So our family goes back a long ways, but I go back over 25 years being involved on the Military Affairs Council at the Chamber of Commerce, past chamber chairman. Uh, past member of the Federal State Foundation, Federal Tech Foundation, Care Clinic Foundation, Federal Urban Ministry, uh, and uh, quite a few others. Um, multiple awards from different civic organizations. But 
enough about that. Folks, we have a spending problem. Now, is that, does that mean I'm already done? Dog, gone. Okay, well, we'll get into it in a minute. And this next question uh, has to do with uh, health care. For the first time in our nation's history, the federal government is trying to force the citizens of our country, that's you and me, to purchase health care that most of us don't want. If you don't purchase the governmental mandated health care, you'll be fined the price of a policy each month. This is a clear and flagrant, flagrant violation of the Constitution. If the federal government is allowed to set this precedent, they can force us to buy anything. Here's the question. Would you work to pass legislation and join with 20 other states in a lawsuit against the federal government to stop this clear violation of their constitutional authority and return to us the freedom to choose the health insurance we want. Mr. Meredith. Hello? Okay. I wasn't keyed. I think we were on, but yes, sir. Uh, the answer to that question is yes. Uh, I'd said in my opening statement that I do not believe in any mandates passed down by the federal government or the state government that are unfunded, but especially with the health care. Uh, I've talked to many business owners out there, uh, as I also have been going door to door and talking to small businesses, and they are very concerned about even trying to grow their company in this economy because of the federal government mandate that's coming down for um, health care. I've talked to some business owners, if they have 40, 45 employees, they're concerned about hiring four or five more people because they might have to have a federal mandate to uh, get health care for all their employees. So the answer, the simple answer to that question is it, yes, I will fight for that. Uh, we have a 100-day plan in the Republican side of the House and the Senate that uh, the, the Health Care Protection Act that we are willing to sign and uh, you know, get to the floor as soon as we are elected. So the answer to that, short answer to that is yes. Thank you. My short answer is no, I wouldn't do that uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, I'm getting my master's at uh, the University of North Carolina in health policy, and we study this bill. And many of the things that people talk about, they're not in the bill. So I would uh, ask anyone to point out where there are these specific mandates, and particularly for small businesses like mine. Now, in North Carolina, we had 1.8 million people who did not have health care, where the overwhelming majority of them were people who actually worked. We had the highest increase of unemployment of any southern state in the nation, and we also had the highest amount of people who did not have health care in the last two years in the nation. And so when you talk about what it did, now there are some things that I don't like about the bill, but the one thing I do like is that for the first time, people who like in my family, who were carpenters, who worked out in the fields, who worked at truck, truck drivers, they actually got insurance for the first time in their life. Good, honest Americans who worked hard, did what they were supposed to, paid their taxes, did all the stuff that America said they were supposed to do, but either because their employer wouldn't give it to them or they could not afford it, they got health care. When I know that there are some people who game the system and for $3 get health care and don't work every a day in their life. So I say I think the people who, who work should get health care, and the people who, shouldn't, who don't work, uh, they shouldn't be allowed to get health care for free. All right. I, my firm belief is that there are certain things that government is designed to do, and there are certain things that it is not designed to do. And while intentions are good things, they don't always bring good results. And the intention behind the, the decisions to have government direct health care, I believe people have good intentions, but I believe we get bad results. And so as a consequence of that, I do not believe it is the role of the federal government to be involved in an individual's health decision. And for that reason, I would oppose uh, the health care bill and would sign this, uh, the, the 100 days uh, provision that we have talked about with the health care protection for our people, the freedom to choose where you want to have your health care. I believe that's an individual decision between a patient and a doctor. And I understand, again, the reason that some people think that it would be a good deal. But there are plenty of good things or good ideas that government hears about and does, but it's not the role of government to do. And if we continue to do things that are not government's proper role, we will continue to get in trouble. I'm not sure how I'm going to spend the minute because I answered this in the first question. but. <laughs> But I'll try. Yeah, yeah. 
I would definitely uh, fight it, and I said that in the answer to the first question. I'll, I'll repeat that right now. Uh, I look at forcing you as citizens to purchase something that you don't want, that you don't have choice in. Uh, I think it's unconstitutional. I mean, that's the short, short answer. And the whole health care debate in this 2,000-page document that they passed, they even admitted they didn't read it before they passed it. How, what kind of way is that to craft law? How do you make public policy when you vote on something when you haven't even read it? That's just ridiculous. It's stupid. I'm sorry. I'm, first time I've ever run for office, if I say something not politically correct, give me a pass. But um, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I will fight it and any other unfunded mandate that comes down from the federal government. I, too, will support uh, what the Republican Party has in plans, and that is to have the Health Care Protection Act one of the first things that we do. One thing that's important to me is I did also look at the health care bill, and I can tell you that reading or trying to read the 2,000-plus pages is very difficult to try to understand. But one thing I did get out of all of the things that I've researched is it's an enabling bill, and that means it's going to enable more people to not get health insurance because they know they can get something for nothing. I pay my insurance. I am a state employee, and I was told that in January, chances are my insurance rates are going up. It bothers me because it's already gone up within the past year just in planning for what's going to happen with this Obamacare bill. So I firmly stand that we've got to protect our rights, and one of those naturally is the protection of our health care. Well, I already know I've got to talk fast because I, I guess I got long-winded. Uh, the, the short answer is yes, uh, we're, we're going to fight this Obamacare. I've been in the health insurance business 10 and a half years, and I can tell you the Obamacare law is going to put more people out of business, and it's going to create a situation where you're incented not to have health insurance. That is exactly the wrong thing we need to be doing, but that is exactly what the liberals in Raleigh and in Washington want to happen because they want government to be the single-payer system. And that is absolutely the wrong approach we should take. We should do everything we can to support the private financing of our health care system. We have the finest health care system in the world. There is nobody that touches us. My wife and I are on the Duke Cancer Board. I can tell you, every time we went up when Jill was getting chemotherapy and then when Jill later had to get radiation, we saw folks from all over the world at Duke. So I can tell you, we have the finest system and Obamacare is going to ruin it. All right, this, 